Hello everyone, Bill Klein here with North Carolina State University. This session will cover blueberry site preparation and establishment. We'll also talk a little bit about irrigation and pruning as it relates to establishment. This quote comes from Gerard Kruer, a retired horticulturist with the University of Georgia. If anyone knows how to grow a blueberry, it's Gerard. Uh, but he was explaining to uh, rabbit eye growers uh, how hard it was to grow southern highbush blueberries. And I really love this quote. The southern highbush is a plant looking for a place to die. So this should inform you uh, that there are differences in, uh, in species and how well they grow and how difficult they are to grow. And we'll get into some of that as we go through this uh, talk. So what makes a good blueberry site? These are two sites in North Carolina, one in the high mountains, uh, the other in the coastal plain, Ash County, North Carolina, and uh, Bladen County in the coastal plain. And uh, what do they have in common? The common features in successful blueberry sites are good drainage, uh, soil aeration, low pH, organic matter, and water. So the pH should be around 4.5 as the middle of the range. Uh, organic matter you'd like to see above 3%. Uh, drainage, uh, really critical and really something that has to be addressed before the bushes are, are ever planted. And uh, most sites in most years during establishment will, will require irrigation. Blueberries have only been cultivated for about 100 years. They were domesticated around 1916. And some of the oldest states that, that produce blueberries have uh, unique soils where they perform quite well. So in North Carolina, these are, are organic sands with a high organic matter content and a water table really near the surface. Um, now, as a county extension agent uh, advising people on how to grow blueberries, this is very often not the situation that you will encounter. So in order to emulate this, you would be adding uh, organic matter to the soil. Uh, adding irrigation and uh, embedding the rows to improve uh, root aeration. The blueberry root system is about as wide as the top part of the plant, uh, not much wider, a, a fibrous mat of roots uh, underneath the bush. And the depth of rooting is dependent on how well aerated the soil is. So the better job you do prepping the site, uh, the better root system you will have. Here we see two very different soils in North Carolina. The, the uh, picture on the left is uh, Carolina Bay soil, uh, still in the soil core, just as it was pulled out of the ground. High humic matter uh, percentage, uh, pH is low, and internal drainage is really good. It's still a sand-based soil. Uh, on the right, you see a, uh, a red clay that uh, has low humic matter. The pH is low, which is good, but internal drainage is very poor. So um, handle these soils very differently in terms of site prep. From a fertility standpoint, the Pamlico muck, uh, as you look at the bottom line on this soil test report, the humic matter is at 10 plus percent, uh, pH 3.7. And uh, if you look in the, the uh, red circle, the fertility recommendations are for zero lime, uh, 30 to 60 pounds of nitrogen per acre, 50 to 70 pounds of uh, phosphorus and a little bit of uh, potassium. So on these soils, uh, very often phosphorus is uh, the most limiting factor. If we compare the bay soil to a typical Piedmont uh, soil sample in North Carolina, if you look at the, uh, the bottom line here on the soil test result, the first number humic matter is uh, 0.66%, so less than 1%. So this site would definitely need to be uh, mulched uh, for blueberry. The pH is 5, so that's uh, pretty good. If you look at the uh, fertilizer recommendation in the red circle, uh, just nitrogen by the time the uh, second year comes around. So a uh, very different uh, uh, soil test from the uh, Carolina Bay soil. Soil testing is really important because that's what you base your fertilizer applications on. As you can see from those two soils, uh, uh, very different recommendations based on, on the soils. Uh, generally, uh, blueberries are not going to take up any fertilizer until they start to leaf out in spring. And uh, most of our fertilizer, uh, if needed, is applied uh, early, uh, early in the season. And you want to end by mid to late summer to the, allow the plants time to harden off before winter. Uh, so uh, often nitrogen is the only thing that's needed. The nitrogen need is going to increase with, uh, with plant age. 
a couple of good sources, uh, urea or uh, ammonium sulfate. These are some of the references that I've uh, found useful over the years for uh, blueberry fertility. Uh, in addition to our, our own uh, state recommendations, there's a high bush blueberry production guide on the web. Uh, there's some good information out of Oregon State, a lot of work done there. And uh, uh, a nice article in Hort Technology in 2015 that, uh, that uh, is helpful as well if you'd like to, uh, to do some reading on uh, some of the uh, bases for these recommendations. But uh, again, uh, your own soil test results are the ultimate guide for, for what you would like to do. One great way to uh, evaluate a site for blueberry production is to look up the uh, soil type on uh, soil maps. And we used to carry around uh, a book for every county, but now the uh, web soil survey is available. Just want to make sure everyone's aware of this website. So you can um, map sites by, uh, by address or find them with the satellite imagery and uh, just a really good resource for, uh, for evaluating a site uh, for any sort of crop production. On the upland sites, uh, the way you modify a site for blueberry production is to add, uh, add bark mulch uh, to give the uh, plant a substrate in which to root to lower the pH and improve the, the drainage. Uh, the finished height on this field uh, will be uh, with beds 12 to 18 inches higher than the uh, row middles. Drainage is critical for aeration in the root zone and the drains have to be maintained for the life of the planting. When amending the soil, it's important to distinguish between bark or wood chips. The pine bark from the outer part of the tree uh, is a good soil amendment for uh, blueberries can be mixed into the soil prior to planting. Uh, wood chips are, are not a good soil amendment because they tie up too much nitrogen. So the white interior part of the tree uh, does not work well as a soil amendment unless it's decayed. Uh, it works uh, really well on the surface as a mulch, but not mixed into the soil. At this point, I'd like to review the basics of establishment and then take a look at some images later of uh, established sites. Uh, first thing you'd like to do is to select a well-drained site in, in full sun. I'd like to avoid clay soils if possible. And, uh, you'd like to acidify the soil, if needed, to a pH between 4 and 5. Uh, a lot of uh, soils in the southeast, uh, if they haven't been limed, will be pretty close to this uh, initially. Uh, best way to find this out is to have your soil tested. Uh, and once you have that, you'll know what the humic matter percent is and also the uh, pH. And you can adjust the fertility levels uh, according to those results. Uh, after that, you want to make sure you purchase the correct species and cultivars for your soil type and, and location. In a lot of instances, this will be uh, rabbit eye blueberries rather than southern high bush or, or northern high bush. Most sites will need to add uh, acidifying organic matter, so uh, peat moss, uh, pine bark, or aged sawdust, and uh, almost always need to mound the amended soil to form raised beds. Unless the site is uh, sloping and, and uh, convex, you just uh, really will benefit in most cases from uh, from raised beds. Uh, continuing here with the basics, uh, we like to plant dormant bushes in uh, raised beds or rows usually in late winter, so that's going to be February or, or March. Uh, I typically prune the bushes at planting to keep only three or four upright shoots and to reduce the height by one half to two thirds, so that's a pretty severe pruning. Uh, even if you do not prune at planting, you still want to make sure to remove the flower buds. Now, you can, can either prune these off or just strip the flowers off once the bushes begin to bloom, but it's really critical that you prevent fruit production in the first year. Uh, after planting, you want to provide water. Uh, most, uh, most locations in most years, you'll have to have irrigation uh, to get good survival. You'd like to maintain a weed and a grass-free zone around each plant. The blueberries do not compete well with, with weeds or grass, uh, especially uh, young bushes. And you can apply a layer of surface mulch. Now, this can be uh, pine bark, pine needles, wood chips, or uh, plastic or woven plastic uh, weed mat fabric. Uh, some additional considerations before you plant, uh, depending on what you find when you dig holes in the field, and uh, evaluate the, uh, the drainage, uh, you may find that uh, deep plowing is needed prior to forming the beds. Uh, weed control 
and pH adjustment and mulch uh, may take a year or more to, to get right. So you have an opportunity before the bushes are there to, to really uh, do some, some uh, pretty stringent weed control. Uh, and it's much more difficult to do once the plants are in place. Uh, if sulfur is needed for uh, pH lowering, needs to be applied at least a year ahead of time. Uh, sulfur lowers pH through a, a biological process, not a, not a chemical process. So bacteria have to break down the sulfur and that takes time. Uh, after a year, you retest and determine whether the pH has been lowered enough and then you can, can plant. Uh, drainage and raised beds are best addressed before planting. It's just really hard to improve drainage once the bushes are in place. And uh, the last point there, uh, row orientation. I, I hear folks say, should I plant east to west or north to south? And I, I really think row orientation should optimize drainage. I think drainage is a lot more important than orienting for sunlight. At planting time, I like to have the bedded area prepared so that you can plant with your bare hands. If you're really out there chopping around with a shovel, it's not uh, it's not fluffy enough. It's not well aerated enough uh, yet for for planting. Uh, would encourage you to uh, start with some clean plant material. So be careful where the uh, where the plants come from. Uh, get them from a clean and true to type source. Uh, uh, tissue culture plants uh, that have been uh, virus indexed are becoming more available, and if you can find those, I would encourage you to, to pursue them. We generally plant extra. Uh, you can double set some plants, so if you're on a four foot spacing, maybe plant a uh, part of a row on a two foot spacing just to have some extra plants growing in the field that will be the same age as, as the rest. And then when the plant dies, you can reset it with uh, one of the double sets. Uh, really uh, like the idea of a weed matting or a plastic uh, uh, for previously planted areas where weed pressure may be high. And, and again, uh, irrigation is, is just essential. This is a planting in coastal South Carolina. The site was amended prior to planting, uh, raised beds, uh, no plastic on the surface, but uh, wood chip mulch uh, as a surface mulch. This field is in coastal North Carolina. It's a pick your own, uh, pine bark amended. Uh, these are southern high bush blueberries and uh, bedded and with black plastic on the surface. This field is in the uh, eastern Piedmont of North Carolina. These are rabbit eye blueberries. This is uh, year two, uh, say February. Uh, they're amended with pine bark uh, and black plastic over the top and uh, were planted through the plastic. You can see that they were potted plants. They had to, to cut a pretty big hole to, uh, to plant through the plastic. This is a nice uh, certified organic uh, planting of rabbit eye blueberries with a weed mat on the surface. Uh, this picture was in uh, 2011. Uh, some of you may remember John Vollmer, the North Carolina agents. Um, uh, John's son, Russ, now has the uh, planting. Um, this was an interesting photograph uh, because the weed mat was added after the fact. So you can see the uh, cuts in the weed mat where it was fitted around the blueberry bushes after they were in place. Another rabbit eye blueberry planting in the North Carolina Piedmont, uh, this uh, amended site on black plastic. Uh, there's a pretty good slope here, and you notice there's, there's no uh, concave areas in the field, no dished out areas that would trap water. So a really good site uh, preparation here, and the uh, plastic's holding up quite well. Um, here we see another North Carolina Piedmont site. This uh, surface mulch is uh, shredded wood mulch rather than than plastic or, or weed mat, but this was also an amended site. Uh, sod middles, so this is a pick your own, and uh, the, the beds are, are uh, quite a bit higher than the, uh, than the middles, so the root system of these blueberries is above grade. This is a uh, northern high bush planting, uh, amended soil with a weed mat. Uh, this photograph was taken in the Netherlands. This field's in uh, South America, in Chile. Uh, it was amended and uh, surface mulched with both with uh, aged sawdust. Where soils are entirely unsuitable for blueberries, it's possible to grow them in bark beds. This was an interesting planting I saw in uh, 2009 in South Georgia. Uh, early ripening southern high bush uh, growing in pine bark. Uh, the, the beds are just uh, pine bark piled on top of the ground uh, on a, a mounded uh, base. 
and if you can keep the bark wet, they'll grow in it and do quite well. Common mistakes when establishing blueberries, uh, poor site prep, lack of raised beds, lack of irrigation, uh, wrong blueberry species for your area, a failure to prune. Uh, one I see really commonly is, uh, is failure to adjust the pH uh, prior to planting. It's, it's tempting to get a soil test result back. The pH is not right, but you're ready to order plants. But that's really a mistake. If you go ahead and, and order the plants and plant them in, in a high pH site, they will really struggle. And uh, you'll see a lot of intravenal chlorosis, as you see in this image, the yellowing between the veins uh, caused by the high soil pH. So it's an iron deficiency, but it's pH rather than iron. So uh, you really fix it by lowering pH rather than by applying iron. So this causes the, the bushes to stop growing, and with blueberries, it's really hard to get them going again once you stunt them. So I really encourage you to get everything right uh, before you ever plant. I'd like to show a couple of images of uh, drainage problems in blueberry fields. Uh, the image you see here uh, is a field that has a concave area in the center, and it's a fairly tight soil, lots of clay. Uh, so the root systems are restricted. Uh, when this soil is uh, saturated, the root penetration just does not occur. So you get these sort of flat uh, pancake uh, root systems uh, that uh, just can't support the bush. So uh, in the center of the, the image, you see the bushes that are yellowed and stunted. And as you look around the edge of the, uh, the image where the slope is, is improved, you actually see the bushes doing much better. Uh, around the edges and even the two bushes in the foreground uh, at the ends of the rows where uh, where drainage is, is better because it's, it's next to a ditch you see the bushes uh, doing much better they just have a, a more established root system so uh, really want to avoid uh, this type of situation either by uh, bedding higher or by not planting in these uh, concave areas in uh, poorly drained soils. Just another example here of, uh, of a drainage issue. The uh, bushes in the foreground have a lot of uh, new shoots uh, uh, appearing. Uh, those in the far background as well. But in between, in the uh, in the top center of this image, you see uh, a lot of bushes that are stunted. And uh, again, this is a this is a drainage issue. Uh, bushes planted fairly flat, a uh, uh, fairly uh, fairly tight soil that does not uh, stay well aerated. And uh, so the drainage issues over time become apparent as the bushes grow and they, the root systems get as big as they can be and then they start going backwards. So uh, you could address this with, uh, with soil amendments prior to planting and also with bedding and also with uh, row orientation. Most large commercial fields in the southeast use overhead irrigation. It can be used not only for drought relief but also for uh, freeze protection in the spring. Uh, these are fairly high volume systems. Um, small operations often have uh, drip irrigation that uh, operates from wells, uses a lot less uh, water, and, uh, and also avoids uh, wetting the bush overhead. Drip irrigation systems usually consist of uh, one or two uh, drip lines uh, down the road that uh, either have uh, punch in emitters that you add yourself at each bush or uh, pre placed emitters that are built into the irrigation line at regular intervals. Uh, I often see uh, 18 inches as a pretty standard uh, spacing for the pressure compensated drip lines and uh, with that sort of spacing uh, you're wetting the entire row rather than just at the bush. This is a drip system on a volcanic soil in South America. I just like this picture because you can see the wetted zone around each bush. Uh, this particular soil uh, uh, seems to wet really well from a single emitter at the bush. If you've got a, a really sandy soil, the, uh, the water goes uh, straight down. You don't get the spread that you need from the drip system. So at that point, you may need more than one emitter or you may need a uh, irrigation uh, drip line that wets the uh, entire row at regular intervals. I mentioned pruning earlier as an integral part of establishment. Uh, this is a picture of a new field pruned uh, six months earlier at the time of planting in February uh, to reduce the height. We left a few bushes unpruned and they really stand out by midsummer. The uh, bush that was not pruned at planting is really long and spindly and sort of top heavy. The new growth is all, all up on the top of a, a really long whip. Uh, you compare that to the bush that was pruned at the time of planting, 
Uh, that uh, bush is much shorter, uh, sturdier. It's already producing a, a multi-trunk plant. So uh, blueberries are not grafted. They're growing on their own roots. So if you cut them back really hard, they'll they'll still come back true to type, and and uh, you'll start forming that multi-trunk plant. When setting out a blueberry bush, I always uh, prune off or or rub off all the flower buds uh, so that it doesn't produce any fruit. You you also would like to uh, spread out the roots so that the root mass is no longer in the shape of a pot. In the first year, your goal should be to avoid fruit production entirely and just grow the plant vegetatively. So once you remove those flower buds, uh, the plant will not form any more flower buds until the next year. So it will put all its energy into vegetative growth. So you, you really need to grow a bush before you can uh, produce a crop. Blueberries are pruned uh, every year for the life of the plant. So in year two, you'd like to remove the, uh, the low-lying or weak shoots and crossovers and prune the bush to an upright habit. Uh, if it's grown really well, you can allow it to produce a little fruit in uh, year two. So in this image, we've allowed the bush to produce some fruit. Uh, so we're looking at it in February of year two versus February of year three. So picked a few berries, but didn't leave enough fruit on there to impede vegetative growth. So Twelve months later, uh, we've got uh, quite a quite a good amount of growth, and starting to see all different ages of canes um, uh, as the bush gets older uh, coming out of the ground. So, looking at the bush in uh, year three, at the time to prune, February of year three, uh, again uh, shaping the bush, uh, producing an upright habit, take out the low angled uh, branches and open the center. Uh, but we're, we're starting to see uh, all different ages of canes now. And, and over time, you'd like to keep the bush as a multi-trunk plant and, and have all uh, different ages, one, two, three, four-year-old canes emerging from the ground. So you're constantly replacing the oldest ones with, uh, with newer ones. So here we see uh, two blueberry bushes, one pruned, one not pruned. Uh, just a, a visual example of the diagram we looked at in the previous slide. So the uh, bush on the right uh, is, is pruned, and you can look at the bush on the left and tell what you would have to cut to uh, to make it look like the one on the right. So so really some some large cuts to remove those uh, low angle branches and the crowding in the center, uh, mostly basal cuts uh, to to shape the plant. Some of the phone calls you'll get as a county agent will involve acres of blueberries, and some will involve one blueberry bush. But the uh, the principles uh, remain the same. Uh, this is a a ornamental planting in the uh, landscape at the Sand Hills Research Station in North Carolina. Uh, they've got a raised bed. They've amended it. Uh, they've got a bark mulch on the surface, and you can see the uh, blueberries doing quite well. Uh, even just a few plants in the landscape. So the principles that apply to uh, to field scale production uh, also apply to the homeowner and the backyard gardener. I hope this information is useful to you and I uh, hope we can answer any questions you may have and thank you for your attention.